we are flying into the unknown. This is really discovery. We navigators are here on Earth, and we're trying to fly a spacecraft remotely. And we will get to see Ultima Thule for the first time. We're going to learn so much from the venue about the formation of our solar system. For sure, it's going to surprise us. The primary difference between New Horizons and OSIRIS-REx approach to their targets is the velocity. Our flyby speed when we fly by Ultima Thule will be about 32,000 miles per hour. So there's no slowing down. OSIRIS-REx, on the other hand, was designed to rendezvous with Bennu, to match Bennu's orbit. The first two approach maneuvers for OSIRIS-REx slow the velocity down from 1,100 miles per hour to less than one mile per hour. New Horizons is a flyby mission. We have one chance to get it right. Flying a spacecraft in practice is really not like flying a plane or playing a video game. You have to plan many, many weeks in advance. The principles of navigation still apply. You have information around you that tells you where you are and you do corrections to get on the course to where you want to be. For a critical flyby, like Ultima Thule, we actually started planning the set of commands to the spacecraft about a year and a half ago. In space, the environment is a lot different. So there's no GPS. New Horizons is going to be about 4 billion miles from Earth. It takes us 6 hours and 8 minutes to get a command sent from Earth to the spacecraft. It takes over 6 minutes for the signal to leave OSIRIS-REx and reach Earth traveling at the speed of light. What we do is we load commands to memory and they execute out of spacecraft memory as the onboard clock ticks down. To get to Bennu's doorstep, we need to use a technique called optical navigation, where we command the spacecraft to take pictures and those pictures give us information about where the spacecraft was relative to Bennu when they were taken. We use that to determine the course that we're on and compare that to the course that we want to be on. We do the maneuver to get us back on track and at Bennu's doorstep. I didn't have any preconceived notion of what we might see at Pluto. It has been simply amazing. I mean, Pluto has it all. It's volcanoes, it's ice fields, it's mountains, it's atmosphere, it's haze. Pluto is just an amazing place. And Ultima Thule, we may find out that it's got the same sort of things going on. What's really groundbreaking about the navigation on OSIRIS-REx is the size of Bennu. Bennu is the smallest object to ever be orbited by a spacecraft. Because the gravity is so low, we can effectively maneuver around the whole entire asteroid without using much fuel. And it allows us to map the entire surface in a matter of two weeks. I grew up in the 60s and was continually watching the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo astronauts on TV. I really wanted to have an exciting life like those astronauts were having. I knew that I wanted to do something where I could make a difference and every day was different. Copy that. Looks like we have a good day. It was the Hubble Deep Field image that came out when I was in high school, the one with the thousands of galaxies in one frame, that really inspired me to be able to contribute in some way to expanding our knowledge of the universe. Science is an amazing field, any, any kind of science. There's always more to learn. There's always something more to discover. What I love about navigation is it's kind of where engineering and science are combined. It's really where you do the hard engineering to achieve the science objectives of a mission.